So you play Call of Duty Warzone and you play on this, but you want to try out this. Today, I've got a starter guide on learning controller. Let's get into it. Now, I know the Call of Duty menus are a little um, convoluted. There's a lot of things that you have to look at and a lot of things you have to change, but that's okay because I'm here to help. So the first thing you're going to need to do is swap from keyboard and mouse to controller. It's a simple button. You can find it in the keyboard and mouse section, or you can find it in the controller section. Either one's fine. You just got to change from this one to that one. Now, I personally have a bunch of settings that I've already gone over and done, and I love it a lot. But this is going to be a section for you to figure out what works for you. So I'm going to give you a good starter. If you want to see my advanced version, obviously I'll have a link for it down below and you can see what my settings are and how they run right now. But um, let's get into uh, some of the other options. Tactical. Tactical is probably one of the most useful for people who don't know how to play controller as this is going to give you crouch on stick. And that means that whenever you press down on the joystick on the right side, you will actually mess up your entire setup all at once because I'm good like that. You will actually have the option to crouch when pressing down on the right stick, which means if you've ever been killed by a drop shotter, then that's what they were doing most likely. Drop on stick. Unless you have fancy paddle buttons on the back, you're generally going to have crouch on stick. Uh, default sticks. I don't really change any of that. If you uh, happen to play, I guess, Southpaw or anything like that on controllers before, you're probably not watching this, but that's where you would change it. Inverted, same thing. If you were an old GoldenEye player and you loved inverted, there's your option as well. Uh, dead zones are really easy to explain, really hard to perfect. Dead zones are the amount of space on your joystick that is not active. So 0.05% of my joystick in the middle does not work. What that does is it allows to cut off stick drift. And then 0.95 of my joystick on the edge doesn't need to be registered for maximum speed. So that means this gives me basically 90% of my joystick that is always functioning and 5% on both sides that don't need to be ac activated for me to get the maximum value of what I'm doing. So basically, if your joystick doesn't feel like it's going maximum speed, reduce your max input on your dead zone and you'll get your maximum speed with pressing less. And if you feel like your sticks are drifting, meaning that your character's moving where it's looking without you touching it, increase your minimum dead zone. Those right there alone are going to go a long way for getting you started. After that, your stick sensitivity is going to be a personal setting, but I'm going to tell you, if you want to start off with the best that you can have, you're probably looking about five to seven. Five to seven on that is going to be a very good starter point as it's going to be slow enough for you to learn on the sticks, but not so slow to where you can't turn. And then crank your ADS sensitivity multiplier down to 0.8. I like 0.8, some like 0.75, some like 0.85, but realistically, you're looking for about a 20% off. What happens here is whenever you ADS using your left trigger, uh, your character's sensitivity will drop by whatever percentage you've set there. If you go above one, your ADS will get faster. If you go below one, your ADS gets slower. At 0.8, I have a 20% less sensitivity while ADS than not ADS. So that means I can spin faster when I'm looking around and spin slower when I'm uh, ADS. It just adds more control. If you like to go in and get nuanced custom sensitivity per zoom, you can change it so that way every different site has its own sensitivity. Don't do it. Don't do it. Especially if you're learning, don't do it. The easiest one to learn on for your aim response curve is linear. Linear means every bit of movement is going to be directly the same as how much you move your stick. And honestly, if you're looking to learn, that's the best because that has the least amount of variance. And cutting out variance is exactly what we're looking for here. And then I'm going to tell you, honestly, if you're learning, turn off uh, vibration. You don't need it. It's not important. And realistically, it might throw your aim off, especially while you're earning. You know, while you're learning everything. The uh, 
I've never met a mouse that vibrates or a keyboard that mouse vibrates. So you probably don't want your controller to vibrate either. I have mine on, but that's because I'm used to it. Aim assist, leave it alone. Standard. You don't need anything crazy. You'll see traditional aim slow down near target. This is all you need. Basically, what this says is whenever you're looking at somebody, your sensitivity gets less. So it makes it easier to follow them. Perfect. And uh, we're going to get into the part that really matters here, which is how to control your controller uh, when you first start learning. Okay. So the first thing you're going to learn is plunder is going to be your friend for learning. Plunder gives you plenty of room to die, respawn, die again, and uh, get as much as you can out of it. One of the primary things I'm going to tell you to uh, practice on, obviously, is getting into fights. You're going to want to fight as much as you can, as often as you can, because realistically, that's going to be the first way you're going to get better. But let's get into the tips. I'm going to give you three pretty simple things that will help you get better at controller faster. And the first thing is find a loadout that you're familiar with and stick with it. Changing your loadout frequently is going to re is really, really, really going to make your life a lot harder because if you have to constantly be learning the weapon and you have to constantly be learning how to fight on controller at the same time, you're going to run into a lot of issues and uh, they're not going to be good ones. They're not going to be good ones at all. So find yourself a loadout and stick with it. Whatever you want to be by the time you're done learning is what you should just go ahead and start with. So if you're going to try to be an aggressive player, start with aggressive guns. If you're going to be a, a more of a supportive player, something a little bit mid-range, start with mid-range guns. If your dream is to be the best controller sniper in the world, start with snipers. Today, I'm dropping in with the Folk Stemgewehr and the Type 99. Uh, the Type 99 being one of my signature weapons right now. And the Folk Stemgewehr is just fun. It's just a good little fun build. So, first trick, stick with a loadout. Keep one that you're comfortable with. The second one, which I actually was talking about today on stream, uh, you can check out my stream seven days a week, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We play the games, do the things, we live the life. We have ourselves a good old time uh, talking about Warzone, and I give out more tips like this on how to get better at Warzone whenever I can. So, tip number two is whenever you are fighting, whenever you are fighting anywhere over range, Mm, smaller motions make larger returns. So, it is better to aim aim small, miss small. So what that basically means is, I think I just got hit by a Rytek. What that means is you want to, nope, I'll get hit with an incendiary type 99. Cool. Uh, what that means is, it's better to take your time and make small adjustments on your aim than it is to wildly flail around. It's one of the reasons why I recommend frequently lower sensitivities, especially to start. You can always turn your sensitivity up as you learn, but when you're learning, you need to be able to learn how to be on target and maintain that consistency on target because consistency in the war zone is gonna get you more wins. So being able to make small motions and learning to train yourself to make those small motions are gonna go a lot longer and a lot further and a lot more useful than it's gonna be trying to learn how to do big sweeping motions all the time. Most of the most of the fights in the game are gonna be easy to win with uh, by making just cut. So this guy just doesn't take damage. There we go. Uh, by making small, more comfortable motions. Even even if you feel like you're moving a lot slower than you usually do, that's okay because you're learning. And while learning, you need to make obviously smaller motions so that you can learn on your own speed. You will get faster. You will get faster. There's an old there's an old saying. I can't remember what what branch it is, but there's an old saying, and it says, uh, "Slow is steady, steady is fast." And that's really what you're going for here when you're making the conversion from controller or to controller from keyboard and mouse. And then the third and probably the most often, most often kind of messed up thing uh, on learning controller compared to keyboard and mouse is on keyboard and mouse, unless you're left handed, of course, you know, you might still use your right hand to aim 
on keyboard and mouse even if you're left-handed but uh, the best thing I can tell you is when you are fighting close quarters meaning you're fighting probably um, well there's a guy running in over there I was gonna actually shoot at him but if you're fighting at about this distance from me to the door this is aiming you're aiming with your left stick you are aiming with your left hand and that is probably the oddest thing for most players who convert from keyboard and mouse to controller is you are forced to learn to aim with your left hand if you want to succeed because Enemy aim assist the way it works on controller is based on your character's strafing and if you are not moving and you're trying to aim all with your right stick it's very small motions and small motions are hard to control small motions are hard to control whereas the left stick is a sweeping motion so learning to learning to make a small motion on your right stick while strafing will save you so much fighting you will you will miss significantly less so i'm going to show you right here so this is just me strafing and just barely holding holding my stick in the direction that i want the the player to be moving so right now i am adsing and then i'm pressing right on the joystick and left on my right joystick and that just gives me that that smooth transition right there to be able to hold on to the person uh and you only need a slight motion you only need slight motions but that left and right strafing makes you harder to hit and it also makes your character uh easier to control and it's really weird because and the reason why this works like that is because a strafe motion on this game uh, at max left or right is consistent. And it comes back to what I was saying before, consistency is key. So by making a consistent left or right motion while aiming, you make yourself harder to hit also, but it also increases, uh, increases your accuracy because you, you have to make less sharp movements with your right stick and on controller, if you've played controller barely any, you know how hard it is to kind of control recoil on your right stick while trying to move on your left stick while trying to change where you're going. And there's a lot of things, a lot of small adjustments that you're having to make at one time. And so by by learning to control your uh, recoil with your left stick by moving like that, you will have so much more fun learning controller. Now, those are some of my simple tips. I would love to know what are some simple tips that you learned when you first started playing controller or when you swapped over to controller from keyboard and mouse that really made the difference for you. I, uh, I have really been enjoying my transition over to controller over the last few months because I find that um, I find that it gives me a, uh, a new challenge. So if you're up for a new challenge too, if you're coming over from controller or coming over to controller from keyboard and mouse good luck to you uh, i believe in you you've got this but thank you all so much for checking out the video like i said leave some of your favorite tips down below maybe you'll help somebody find the missing piece that they didn't know that they were looking for but thank you all so much you'll have yourselves a wonderful wonderful evening i will see you soon until next time ladies and gentlemen and everyone else peace